All right, hi everybody, welcome. Um, we're going to be talking today, um, learning today about um, hems. Um, my main example is going to be pants, but um, as you may or may not know, a hem is anything that's the end where something ends. So it could be um, the bottom of a skirt, could be the bottom of a jacket, could be sleeves. To, to the end of, of anything on, on clothing. Um, we're not gonna talk about clothing with lining because that just gets more complicated, but just sort of basic um, hems. Um, I really encourage you all to think of this as a conversation, especially with everybody's rich sewing experience. So, um, you know, if I say anything that doesn't sound right or you have a question about, please feel free to ask me. My sewing history is I grew up with a phenomenal tailor, my mom, and um, I learned since I was little from her. I don't have any, you know, school training, but I've been sewing since I was a kid. Um, I learned patterns um, from mom, the traditional way, but then I'm a child of the 80s, so my big thing is taking old clothes and um, changing them up, you know, upcycling. So that's that's where my forte is but um i really wanted to do mending because i feel like in this time all a lot of us or at least speaking for myself i'm really wanting to be more self-sufficient mm -hmm. um and i don't have access to my beloved take it or leave it so um mm. i'm having to make do with what i have at home and i thought it might be fun to pass on to people because um, it's fun to mend your own clothes um but it's also, you know, obviously better for the environment too, because we're not getting rid of so much. And it just feels good to be able to fix something. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with super easy, and forgive me if you guys already know this, but I just wanted to start with basics, because um, it is being recorded, other people will watch it. And we're gonna start with just, if a hem comes out, and you wanna put it right back where it was, how to fix it. And there's a couple of ways to do that. And I'm gonna hold up examples. If you can't see them, let me know, okay? So we're gonna pretend that these are pants, mm -hmm. pretty wild pants. Um, and do you guys all have video you all can see, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and so we're gonna pretend that the pants, the bottom here just came out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so this is the easiest part because there's already, you have a guide, there's mm -hmm. already a, a stitching, right? There's already a line along mm -hmm. the bottom there and it, it's already folded. Mm -hmm. If the hem has been out for a long time and flapping around, you can also go back and iron it. But here's what I would do. I would find, so this is my hole, right, this bit. I would find it well before the hole, mm -hmm. like an inch, where I know it's tacked down really sturdy, and I would pin. And I'm just going to pin pin it in place and you guys are seasoned sewers mm -hmm. but for people who are not pinning can be tricky I've noticed with beginners it's a motion of your hand you hold with one hand you stick the pin in with another and then you kind of push it through like that mm -hmm. and you always pin um, perpendicular to the line of sewing mm -hmm. and that way you don't break or you have le you're less likely to break a pin so I'm going to pin all the way along So I've pinned through the gap and past the gap. If that makes sense. So it's exactly, it's falling exactly the way it is on this part here that's sewn. And then anytime with the hem, and I'll probably say this a lot, um, if you're not a meticulous sewer, which I sadly am not, one great way of, of avoiding your stitching being seen or minimizing it is picking a, a thread color that matches. So I've got this blue uh, material, right? And even though there's other other material, there's other colors like yellow and blue, know, uh, blue, yellow and green, I'm gonna pick a dark blue. Mm -hmm. And what I would do, I didn't thread it up, so I'm not gonna use the machine, but I would just use this line that's already there. You can really see it right here. Mm -hmm. And I would line my needle up with that and I would just sew all the way through to the end. That's it, it's super easy. If you have something like cotton or polyester, you just sew using the previous line as a guideline. 
Is that, that's pretty straightforward, right? If you have something like wool, or you're noticing that the stitching before was a slip stitch, then you're gonna do it slightly differently, and I'll show you how to do that. Slip stitch is a little difficult to explain on camera. There's a lot of good videos on how to slip stitch, and I've done a little diagram on how to do it too. You can see if that'll help. Um, again, I would use a, the same color. I'm using contrasting color right now so you guys can see. But so if this was, a lot of times you'll see wool pants, they do slip stitch. And the reason that you do slip stitch on that or like silk pajamas or something is so that the stitches don't show. And the idea with slip stitching is you just catch enough to, um, to pick up a little bit of the material to adhere it to the um, other side. You're not trying to tack it down. And with a bunch of those little teeny stitches then make a nice little hem. And so the idea, so here's my hole. Again, this is as if these were my very subdued, quiet pants. Right? And the hem came out. So if I want to slip stitch, like pretending I didn't want the stitching to show, I would take, we're pretending this is blue, a matching thread, and then I'm going to thread the needle up through the fold. And I think you'll be able to see better in a, in a diagram. But that way I hide the knot inside. And then slip stitching. Slip stitching is where you take a tiny bit, you take a tiny bit of this side, of the wrong side of the fabric, but just mm. a little bit, and then a teeny tiny bit, do you see? Just a mm -hmm. little, little bit right here of the fold, and then you pull it through. And you can do a single thread, I always do double because that's just my habit. See, that's a big slip stitch, but the idea is to get it as teeny tiny as possible. On this side, it doesn't matter as much because this is the underside, but I'm really, when I'm picking up this part right here, I'm really trying to get just the tip of the needle, just a tiny little bit. And then I do that all the way along. And I'm not gonna do that for time's sake. But then when you turn it over, the idea is see, you can barely see the stitch on the other side. Right, so this is, you'd use again, if your fabric that you, or the pants that you had before were slip stitched, or if it's something like wool or silk that you don't want it to show. So that's, that's pretty straightforward for fixing hems. Um, are there any questions about that? Is that pretty clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. All right, so that's if you're fixing hems that have just already come out. Um, so if you want to shorten something, this is where it gets a little trickier and um, you have to be willing, it usually turns out fine, but you have to be willing to accept that it might not, like that's part of altering your clothes, right? Especially the first couple times you do it. So um, I think the easiest way, I'm gonna show you the little diagram that I made and then, um, and then I'll show you with some pants. Um, I think it'll be easier. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, these are my funny little diagram, these are pants, and you wanna turn them inside out first because you're gonna be working on, um, when you're turning it up, you're turning it up into the, the wrong side. So that's what this is. You're gonna want to turn it inside out, and then this is the hard part, you're gonna wanna, um, hopefully you have a friend or a partner or somebody who can help you pin or mark somehow where you want the um, pants to fall eventually. So I've done pins here. Um, you can also use, I and mean, there's a million things you can use. You could use tape, right? You can use, my mom would be so proud. I have, I've never used this before, but I at least have it. This is an invisible um, disappearing oh, ink. Yeah. So it comes out dark, but it's made for tailoring so it then disappears. Um, you could use a Sharpie if you didn't care. Um, there's all sorts of things you could use. But the difficult thing is if you're doing it yourself. So if I'm standing up here, can you see my, I don't know if you can see my, right. And I'm, I'm pinning and then I stand up, right? The fabric changes where, it's, where it is changes. So you're gonna wanna pin it 
where you think it's going to hit and then stand up straight and see if it hits where you want it. Same thing with your skirt, because every time you bend over the pin, right, it changes where the fabric is. It's a little harder to do on your own, but I really recommend pinning and repinning to get it in the right place. Once you've pinned each leg where you want them, take them off, mark all the way around, right, so mark all the way around, and then put them on again, it's kind of a pain, but put them on again and make sure that those pins hit where you want the finished hem to be. But we're gonna do this again with the fabric. Okay, then you're gonna want to measure down two times your seam allowance. So I always use about a half inch seam allowance. It's not really standard. A lot of people do three eighths, but for math's sake, I like doing half inch, it's easier to add. So I would measure down an inch from where I want the pants to um, eventually fall, right? So I measure down an inch and I measure down an inch all the way around. And again, I mark it with the pins. And I leave a pin in for my original mark where I want the hem to be, okay? And then I cut it. This is the moment of, <laughs> I've got to be sure. So I cut it off. And if you're not sure, if you're not positive where you want it to go, always cut a little longer because you can obviously make things shorter, but it's a lot harder to make them longer. And then once you've cut it, you're going to want to iron, you know, this is showing folding it up twice, right? You're going to want to do it twice. So if I was doing... Well, I'll show you with the fabric later. But you're going to want to fold it up twice so that there's no raw edges. I didn't. I didn't understand that. What's I didn't understand. I didn't understand what you were saying. If you, if you, um, if you, you have an additional inch, say, mm -hmm. and then you're folding that up, that'll be the that'll be the hem line. That'll be the line. And then what do you? folding it back on itself to go inside so that yeah, the actual so hem is only a, is only half an inch is that right yeah let's pretend that i, I see that this is a raw edge okay we're pretending yeah so yeah 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 okay and so me personally i know that my seam allowance is a half an inch right okay and so I, oh i see hem. okay all right i and got this you can also depend on how big you want your you hem. want the hem yeah right? that's what i'm if, thinking if you want the hem to be a big deep hem like in the yeah. bell bottoms uh and they could be maybe yeah um, if you want them to be, um, that's a really good point, Joanne. If you want them to be a deep hem, then you just double how big the hem you want it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to people? Because if yeah. I'm, if I want like a delicate little, yeah, like, hem like this, I'm just gonna turn it over. I just did like a quarter of an inch, I quarter see. of an inch. But if I want a nice big hem, and you might do that because yeah. you want to cuff, right? You want, you might want to be able to cuff it and have it look nice. I would do a deeper hem. Yeah. So the point is that however deep you make it, this bottom fold should be the bottom of your pants. Yeah. That's, that's the important part. Mm -hmm. I say half an inch just because it's easier to do the math. Okay, an inch, you know, an inch more. But you could do a deeper hem. Just make sure, that's why we're keeping the pin in place right here. And when mm -hmm. we do this, that's why we keep the pin in place so we know where our final mm -hmm. Our final resting spot is for the bottom of our pants. Mm -hmm. Have I lost people? Do people understand? Yeah, nope. that's, that's sounds good. Very clear. Okay. So then I'll go through the pictures again and we'll do it with uh, fabric. So then you're going to want to pin all the way around. Again, mm -hmm. you're doing it perpendicular to your fabric. And then what I do when I sew mm -hmm. is I sew. <laughs> Sorry. I sew right along the edge right mm. here, super close to the edge of the fabric. And you can either do a straight stitch or you can do that slip stitch again. And then you turn, this is your pants finished. You turn them right side out and then there's your little hem. But we'll look at this with fabric. Sorry, I gotta close the door. My dog's being funny. So, you no, know, uh, the stitch, the stitch that I use for hems pretty much all the time is that lattice stitch, you know, where you, the yeah, because stitch. the lattice stitch, you know, where it, where it looks like a lattice, you know, you pick a little here and a little here and then a little there and a little, because, um, 
for some reason it's a lock stitch so if the if the stitch breaks the whole hem doesn't go down do you know that do you know that oh, you it looks like a lattice it looks like a lattice hand, right? by hand oh yeah yeah, so that, it, I, think, I think I'm calling it the slip stitch, but maybe it really is called the lattice. Is that looks a little bit like this? Oh, maybe that's it. Is that? Yeah, oh, yes, I know what you're saying. You just pick yeah, a yeah, bit. yeah. I think you're right. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get that. I know it's it's kind of hard to see the visuals. Like, yes. No, I understand. Right. So you call that a slip stitch? I I do. Yeah. But well, I what? Think, yeah. Right. Sure. I trust that is probably called the. Yeah, because the good thing about that is that the whole hem doesn't. You know, if you just do the regular whip stitch, or whatever that is, where you're just picking up and picking up, then if if the stitch goes, then the the seam goes, unless you put a little lock stitch periodically, which is something else I do. Did you like tie a knot? No, no. I just go back on itself. You know, I'll so and so and so. And then at some point I'll go back on itself so that if the thing, if the stitch breaks, the whole hem doesn't come, it just comes down in that little portion. Oh, okay. All right. So what, um, if I, tell me if I, does that, mean, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. Let me well. see if I can, I can explain it in, okay. in another way. Just, okay. So this is, this is kind of me doing my version right. of what the slip stitch right. is. Um, but so here, this is probably better. What Joanne, I think, is saying is, so say this is the hem, and we're doing the slip stitch, yeah. instead of just doing do, 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 all the way yeah. along the edge, when one of those pieces come out, or if you catch it on something, the whole hem's going to come right. out. And so she's saying that she does a stitch, and then she goes back, right? Just, goes, a little, just a little tick back, you know, not a big stitch, but just to lock it so that it won't, any ripping out won't go beyond that point. You and know, then this you go forward again. And then you go forward, and then by a couple inches later, you do that again. You do a little stitch. And so you're not actually tying a knot. You're just going. You're not back tying a knot. You're just going a back stitch, a tiny little back stitch. Perfect. Okay. And um, do, and I hate I hate hemming, and so yeah. so anything I could do to you know to minimize that is um is what I do, and so that's how I do it. I just do this little tiny little back stitch and that locks that section in place. So it, I love it because this, when you sew by machine, when you do a hem like this. Oh yeah, that's it, different. It, it, if something comes out, it really, the rest of it does just kind of stay. And a lot of us probably yeah. have experience where yeah. we had part of our hem out, but you can wear yeah. those pants for a long time before it starts to sag. Yeah. But this one, the bad thing is the whole thing does right. out or is a lot more susceptible. So yeah. that back stitch, I right. hope everyone's understanding that kind of going forward and then coming back. And you do that on the upper layer, so it's not affecting the face. You know, you do it on the, the inside. You do it on this cuff part. On the cuff part, yes. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So you're not, you're not um, adding more uh, stitching on the outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that, Joanne. So oh, I just lost you. Hello? I just lost you. Well, I can hear you. Yeah, but I'm, I've am i lost. Okay, well, you keep talking because I can hear you. I've just lost the image. Okay. Can other people see me okay? Yeah. Yes, yes, I can see you well. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? No. All right, so let's, let's pretend. If you do, please speak up. Um, I'm going to show you how I might... Um, alter some pants. It's just a little hard to see with the lighting, so I'm going to use this napkin as my guide, but um, if I was going to do this with a pair of pants, and it's, again, it's a lot easier to do if you have a friend or someone who's willing to help, um, but you just have to be more persistent if you're doing it um, by yourself. I'm going to move all my windows around here. All right, so I have a pair of pants and I've turned them inside out, right? That's the first step. I don't know if you guys can see. All right, and so we're pretending I put them on. I'm not gonna put them on, you guys. But let's say I want them to be a little bit higher, like here. I, I'm not sure why I would, but just for the sake of this class, we're gonna pretend I want some, you know, culottes kind of things. 
I would pin them just on the one layer on one side. Try not to go through all layers. And then when I bend over, right, the fabric gets longer. So I want to stand up. If you can see that pin. And I'll look in the mirror. It's good to do in front of the mirror and make sure that's where I want it. And then I'll do the same on the other side since I'm using pins. That's what I'm going to use. You could use the tape. That might be easier to see. So we could do that. Great. Mark it. So again, let's see. I think it's about here, but I want to stand up and see if that's about where I want it. If it's too high or too low, I can just move it. Okay, and that's where my final stem is going to be. Then I take the pants off, and then I do what we had talked about before. Joanne's good point here is: um, well, first I mark all the way around. So I'm going to mark all the way around where I want my final stem to end up. This tape is actually quite nice because it's not too sticky. Okay, so I'm measuring and marking. Now I've got a line right all the way. This right here is going to be where my pants are going to fall when they're um, all folded in hand. Now, um, to amend a little bit what I was saying to Joanne's point, uh, I would take, if I wanted a small hem of a half an inch, I would take an inch, right, mm -hmm. and measure down. I'm doubling however big I want my hem to be. And I don't know if people understand what that means, but you can see, like, this is that's that's the width of the, the hem. Yeah. It's from the edge to the okay. stitching. Right. Right? That that's this bit right here. When we're talking about how big we want the hem to be, that's uh -huh. Uh -huh. how deep we want this to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say I wanted a half inch hem, I would take an inch. If I thought, oh, I want a nice big one inch hem, I do two inches. So you double whatever you want your hem to be. And I'm not going to cut these pants because I like them the way they are, but we're going to pretend that I cut them, right? And then if you really are not certain, you could try them on again. It would be a good time to try them on again. Um, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable. So then what I would do is I would keep the marking on, and I would cut, and I would fold up. If it made a half inch, I'm using this now because it's easier to see. Right, I would fold once. And I've got an iron. I find iron oh, yeah. really helpful with hemming yeah. because you want a nice crisp edge. So I'm going to iron my first fold. And this also kind of does the work for you. You don't need as many pins if you've got, if you iron. When I was in junior high school, our home economics teacher said, when you open your sewing machine, you open your ironing board at the same time. Oh, I love it. She, fe she felt that she was right. I mean, um, that uh, the one thing that distinguishes homemade from, uh, from any other kind of stitching is the ironing. That oh, after every every stitch, every seam you make, you iron. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I, I get really lazy. It's easy to not iron, but then you go back and you do iron and do it correctly, you can really see the difference. Yeah. So I ironed once, and then I'm going to iron again. I just, I just want to clarify something. When you have it, regardless of, of how deep you want your hem, say you want a two, or you want an inch, uh, hem to be an inch. Are you saying that the fold over part is also an inch? If Are you, you actually to end up an inch? Then you cut off two inches. And then so you're double, so you're doubling it. You're doubling it. Yeah. Okay. For simplicity's sake, I'm doubling it. Yeah. Not yeah. I got you. Off. Right. You know okay. what I mean? Sometimes people make the first fold a little smaller. Yeah, but yeah, but I understand. Yeah, that well, that gives it a little body too. I think. Would yeah, think. no, for sure. Yeah. 
And if you're doing something like um, jersey or like sweatpants, you don't need to double. You can just do one. Yeah, just do it. Well, you don't have to do it at all, actually. Yeah, that's true if you don't mind it kind of curling up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all personal taste. <laughs> a lot of people like the kind of raggedy look at the end. You could just chop them off and it does this cool, you well, know. Well, I think that's off. the hardest. I, I've never done well with a jersey or any of those knitted materials make doing hems. I actually turn them down. I won't do them. Oh, yeah, I don't because, like them. Because yeah. I don't really know how to do that. Um, if you fold it over, then it's bulky. Right. And if you and if you and if you and then you have to use that slip stitch because you need the elasticity. You know, you, since uh, Jersey and those have yeah, have an elastic component, you have oh, to oh, um, you have to your stitching has to be loose enough to accommodate yeah, right. that. Right, and if you That's do it too it. loose, then it looks. Yeah. Then it looks. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, the only time I ever successfully sewed Jersey and sweaters was I have uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody's talking behind you can't hear you oh it's not me I think it's can you guys me. I'm sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> okay so see I've, I've, we're pretending this is my ham and it's a little curved because the um, the, um handkerchief is curved but you can see that I've ironed here so it's nice and flat and I can iron yeah. a little bit more but we really want to iron it down what do you think about the bottom of pants especially if you're doing like snappy or dust pants you really want a curved bottom and skirts too it looks really nice to have that nice crisp bottom so I've so this is it from this side and this is it from the inside so I think I'm not going to sew on the machine because you guys get what that would look like, right? But I'm going to sew, take my pen so you can see. I'm going to sew right along this edge, right, 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 right here. And the reason is if I sew here, I risk not catching everything up in my sewing. And it also can flop over, right, and hang down. Yeah. It, it just looks sloppy and you want to sew on this side. A good feature to know about your sewing machine, for those of you who have an open the floor, is all sewing machines or most sewing machines have a sleeve feature. So I'm going to pull this up. Okay, so this is my sewing machine, right? This is from the top. This is one of the best. It's a Singer Heavy Duty. You can't break it. At least I haven't and I'm pretty hard on it. But it has this this guy right here, most, most machines will. If you pull that out, then you've got this nice sleeve, oh. right? So it's this, you can put pretty skinny, this is only like two or three inches wide, you can put pretty skinny things around, right? So if I'm gonna be sewing my hem, right? I can put that, around wow. the, the feature. So oh that's a pretty cool feature. So um, if this were, you know, the bottom of the pants, you I put would put the, that oh my God. And just so right there. What is it, Joanne? No, I'm just amazed. I think that's such a great, great gadget. All my machines are so old, they don't have anything like that. You know, isn't it cool? It, it is cool. Because it's really hard to sew, uh, to sew pants, legs. No, exactly. Um, it's really tricky, yeah, it's on the machine. Tricky. When you do it on the machine, I mean. And this was only like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not commissioned by Singer, but I just Yeah, no. It was like 140. It was really that's amazing yeah it's it's i think it's because it's so basic i think they use it in sewing classes a lot but uh, for me it's all i need because it, it only has like well you don't really need much it. unless you do those embroidery things which i never do anyway but you know i just need basic sewing oh absolutely I'd be you happy know, i mean i don't i don't do embroidery or mending or anything on the machine yeah it's just it's so basic and it's yeah. heavy duty so it can really take which i like because that's I good to know it's very good to know 
I've sewn leather on this. Oh, God. Um, so we're pretending, see this line right here? Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So that's where I would sew all along the bottom, all along the hem, right? And then I take out my pins. You and can then sew over the pins, can't you? And with that machine? I do. So that's, yeah. it, that's partly personal preference and also machine. Uh -huh. And also the pins you use, right? Yeah. So if you use really thin pins, um, you can. That's why you're putting your pins perpendicular. Yes, right? exactly. So right over them. Yeah. I know yeah. a lot of people who just out of habit, and again, a lot of it's style. As they go, they, they pull out the pins. Yeah. I I not that. Yeah. Whatever. That, whatever I do. We, I do, I'm always afraid of breaking the needle when it. Right. You know, if it hits the pin the wrong way. No, absolutely, you can. Yeah. You know, so yeah. You can. So it's, it's, that's personal preference. Um, but they're made, especially the really thin ones, um, not the quilting pins, but the really yeah. thin they're made so yeah. sew over them. And then that's, that's it. That's really, that's hemming.